if you go deep enough, you can go full circle to recognizing that, say, for example, you're grateful for like 10 things. And then you pick through each one. And you're like, well, what if I lost that? Would I still be okay? Yes. What if I lost that? Would I still be okay? Yes. You go through and you recognize like, oh, I would still be okay without all of those things. Why is gratitude super important? And, and how can someone be more, more grateful for what they have? Yeah. So my perspective on this has shifted a little bit over the last year or so as well. Um, I think, I think with all of these things, it's important to remember that there are sort of like there, there's a path for everyone and there isn't. So there is, and there isn't because the recognition of like, you know, people like to call it enlightenment or whatever is just yeah. the recognition that right now is all there is. And so there is no path because you're always here and now you're always here. You're always, it's always now. So there isn't anywhere to get, there isn't anywhere to go because there isn't anywhere to get that isn't here now where you are, where you always have been, what you always have been. So people get caught up in striving for certain things and they don't recognize that the striving for enlightenment that striving is the thing keeping them from the recognition because they think that there is somewhere to get. There is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if they just, you know, work hard enough and read enough and, and do all of this. And it's like there are things you will can accomplish, you know, in the eyes of the world, but peace is found in the recognition that there isn't anywhere to get. So when it comes to gratitude, I think there, my perspective on this has shifted a little bit because when it comes back to the identity, which we can get into a little bit, but uh, recognizing that the identity, the story of what you think you are, thinking you are this character, typically for most people becomes sort of like the root of their suffering or has always been the root of their suffering. Like people who are afraid of certain things or, or anxious about certain things or worried about things. It's, it's not super often that someone is worried or anxious about something that doesn't have to do with their idea of themselves. That's where it comes back to for the most part. It's like, how is this person perceiving me? How are all these people going to judge me? I'm worried about X, Y, Z that has to do with the idea of self. So I have shifted away from identity based practices, sort of like the act of gratitude in saying like, I'm grateful for these things that I have because, and people sometimes disagree with this, but I think when you're grateful for something that you have, it kind of inherently creates a fear at the same time of losing that thing. So I think if you go deep enough, you can go full circle to recognizing that, say, for example, you're grateful for like 10 things. And then you pick through each one. And you're like, well, what if I lost that? Would I still be okay? Yes. What if I lost that? Would I still be okay? Yes. And you go through and you recognize like, oh, I would still be okay without all of those things. So it's, it, it can, it can be something that gets people who are, su who are suffering and going through and just like, can't like can't get out of bed in the morning, it can give them, it's like a, uh, emergency ladder. If they're in the water, like trying to get into a boat, like it can help them get to a place. Absolutely. Being grateful and recognizing all of the things that they have to be grateful for, for sure. I think for me, gratitude now is something I define as just like an appreciation for existence here and now for the experiencing yeah. experience I'm having now and beyond that there isn't anything really physical or cerebral to think about to be grateful for because anytime you're basing something in thought or feeling like you want something outside of what is here and now you're sort of missing your experience here and now right. a little bit and maybe it's just like you feel like oh i'm just missing it a little bit but it's like that is all you ever have is this experience here now as life, you know, as existence experience, experiencing itself, the here and now is that it is experience. So for me now, gratitude is just an appreciation for 
the moment for the experience I am having now for the ability to come on this podcast and have a conversation with stone. Like that's kind of the extent of it because beyond that, it's like sort of pulling yourself out of the experience. So it's just coming back to the recognition that this is it. This is I love life. That. I love that. And even like, I mean, Gary Vee says it all the time. The chances of you being alive are 400 trillion to one. So yeah. you already won. Um, but I'm, but I'm curious. I mean, you, you talk about like here and now you talk about like kind of living in the present. How do you, um, like, how do you set goals? How do you look forward to something? Do you, do you like kind of run me through that and, and how you like grow, say your business, your content, your life? How do you, how do you set goals? Yeah, that's a good question. Honestly, it's something that I've sometimes have a tough time with and I've gotten yeah. better. I've found a little bit of balance to it. And I think that's very important for people to understand is that like you can go down certain paths and I've gotten down so many paths of things that I thought were like, you know, the best way to eat or the best way to work out or the best way to set goals, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times I'll find like, I'm, I very much like take things to an extreme in a lot of ways. So, like I'll go to the extreme and realize like, oh, there were some consequences to that. And let's, let's reel it back a little bit. Let's like swing the pendulum back the other way. And eventually as you go through, you kind of like find your own balance with it. So with, uh, Oh shit. Which, what, what was the initial question about for this one again? <laughs> <laughs> Just like setting goals. Uh, do you set yeah, yeah, goals? Yeah. Setting goals. Setting yeah. Goals. yeah. All yeah. good. So, so I think, yeah, sometimes I just get too into it and I'm like, oh, shit. all good. All good. Yeah. Same here. It happens sometimes, but, um, yeah. so with goals, I think it comes back to the recognition that goals give you a direction, but if you feel right. like that is something you have to accomplish in order to feel more whole and complete than you are right now. It's no longer this thing that you want to achieve. It's something you need to achieve because you feel mm. like you need to derive your sense of value from that accomplishment. And growing up, I was very much goal oriented. Like I was very rigid in things and like, I need to, you know, get to this school, get this job, get this grade, blah, blah, blah. And so now I think of goals more so as directions and a way to send me in a certain direction. But while keeping in mind that I'm not necessarily going to always stay on that exact path or having some fluidity and flexibility to veer off depending on you know, what life has in store for me. So instead of yeah. feeling like I need to accomplish that thing, it's a way to put me in a direction. Let's start going this way because I know inherently I am already whole and complete exactly as I am right now. There's nothing that could make me more or less complete. So there is no goal that could be accomplished that would make me more complete than I am right now. So why don't we just see what happens. Let's, let's try this thing and see where it goes. If I perceive it as a success or a failure, it doesn't really matter because either way, you know, like you mentioned earlier, like failures are just learning experiences. And as soon as you become comfortable with failing, like you can do anything, like there's so much more freedom in the recognition that it's okay to fail. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't actually diminish your value or self-worth even a tiny bit. So now I think of goals more so as directions. Like I'll set a goal with the understanding that the odds of this happening exactly how I think it will right now are essentially zero. So as things start playing out differently than I originally anticipated, there's no clinging to like, oh, no, 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 I need to, I need to stay on this path because then you're just yeah. resisting, you know, the experience you're having in the moment, resisting life to a degree. Right. But, I love yeah, that. So that's There's so many clips there. Yeah. So many, so <laughs> many, uh, so many good thought processes. And, and it's true. It's like, even if you like, I see people all the time set goals for like three to five years in advance too. And it's like, how is that? How is that like measurable? Because it's like people, uh, people change, you change, the economy changes. 
uh, marketing changes, like even in business too, it's like so many things change. So I like the thought of it just being like a direction, like we're going, we're just going to go here, you know, and maybe we'll go here. And I, I love that thought process. 